Here's a complete run through of one of our proofs about spans, going through the thought process and steps we take in writing the proof, which include our three basic logical constructions implies or if then statements, for all statements, and there exist statements. We'll also see use of definitions, using previously stated information in the proof, pattern matching, and basic algebraic manipulation. We'll highlight these techniques as we go through the proof. The statement we'll prove is that if the collection v1, v2, v3 spans a vector space v, then so does the collection v1 minus 4v2, v2, v3. Let's get started. The statement we're proving is an if-then or implies statement. To prove such a statement directly, we'll suppose the hypothesis in our proof, and we'll need to deduce the conclusion, giving us a new target. We'll use the definition of span to restate our hypothesis, being careful to match the situation we're applying it to. The collection v1, v2, v3 spans v means that every vector in v can be built as a linear combination of the collection v1, v2, v3. In symbols, for all v and v, there exist scalars, alpha1, alpha2, alpha3, one for each vector in our collection, so that our vector v is that linear combination of our collection alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus alpha 3 v 3. We should also use the definition of span to restate what we need to show. This doesn't go in our proof as we don't know that it's true yet, but it will guide our proof so we definitely want to write it down, again being careful to apply the definition in context. Every v and v can be built as a linear combination of our other collection v 1 minus 4 v 2 v 2 v 3. In symbols, for all v and v, it's okay to use the same letter as we did in the last definition here, because we'll be talking about the same vector in each definition. There exist scalars beta1, beta2, beta3, one for each vector in our other collection. We don't know that the coefficients will be the same as for our other collection, so be sure to use different letters. So that our vector v is that linear combination of our collection, beta1, v1 minus 4, v2, plus beta2, v2, plus beta 3 v 3. Now that we've written out the definition of what we need to show, it tells us what to do next in our proof. Since it's a for all statement, we let v and v be given. What we'll need to do next is to find three scalars, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3, to prove our there exists statement. In order to do that, we're going to need something to start from. Fortunately, we now have a vector v and v in our proof. We can put this token into the for all slot in our hypothesis to unlock the rest of the hypothesis. It tells us that there exist scalars alpha1, alpha2, alpha3, with v equal to alpha1, v1, plus alpha2, v2, plus alpha3, v3. We should now notice something. We're looking for betas that build the vector v in a certain way. And we now know something telling us about how to build v. We can use scratch work, not included in the proof to do a little pattern matching to find what values we want to take for our betas. On the one hand, we know what v equals. On the other hand, we know what we want to show v equals. Let's set those two expressions equal to one another. Both sides involve the three vectors v1, v2, and v3, so if we collect coefficients for these vectors on both sides, we can equate coefficients to see how the alphas and betas relate. Pattern matching, it looks like what we want is beta 1 equal to alpha 1, beta 2 minus 4 beta 1 equal to alpha 2, and beta 3 equal to alpha 3. Remember, the alphas are already given, and we're trying to find the betas, so we do a bit of algebra to solve for beta 2. And now we know what betas we want to take. Back in our proof, we're ready to take our betas as in our scratch work. Now, all that's left is to show an equation. Let's write down the more complicated side, and use what we know to simplify. Well, we can plug in the betas that we took from above. Multiplying that out and simplifying, we end up with alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus alpha 3 v3. And we already know from above that this equals v. This is all that was left to show, so we've completed our proof.